Hi, my name is Josh. I'm Ethan. And I'm Sean. And we are the co-founders of EJS Skateboards. We are asking Shark Tank for a $500,000 loan with 15% equity stake. We have created a product that has never been seen on the market before. A skateboard with a mounted Bluetooth speaker, which gives riders enjoyable skate sessions while listening to their favorite music. Now we will show you a video of how our skateboards are produced. The deck, the part of the skateboard you stand on, is made up of several thin sheets of wood called veneers. Inexpensive boards use fewer sheets and lesser quality woods. These high-end boards use a full seven sheets of top quality maple. Only the top and bottom veneer sheets will actually show, so their exposed side is sanded smooth, and the other side gets a coat of glue. The inside sheets, meanwhile, go through the glue spreader, which saturates both sides. This adhesive is specially formulated to withstand vibration and shock. Workers stack 35 sheets of veneer, the equivalent of five skateboard decks, and place them in a mold. Skateboards vary in size and shape, so there's a different mold for each model. A press applies 40 tons of pressure, compacting the sheets and bending them to the shape of the mold. Excess glue squeezes out the sides, bonding the five decks into one block. They'll be separated later. The block comes out after three hours. Now they drill two sets of holes to the block. These are for mounting the front and back trucks, the pivoting metal axles that enable the skateboard to turn. Now it's time to give the rectangular block a skateboard contour. They select a template in the general shape of the model they're making. It has pins underneath that fit snugly in the truck holes they just drilled. This holds the template still while they do what's called the rough cut, sawing around the template, leaving a two and a half centimeter margin. Cutting off the excess separates the five decks. Now they contour each deck individually. Using a precise template this time, they run the deck against a cutting blade until they have the final shape. Using a router now, they round off the top and bottom edges. Then they smooth all the surfaces against a drum sander. Now they switch to a buffer, which uses a combination of brushes and fine grit sandpaper to remove any rough wood fibers. The deck is now perfectly smooth. room where they first spray the decks with a colorless primer. This seals the pores in the wood veneer so they won't absorb the coat of lacquer that comes next. The primer takes two hours to dry. Next, they spray on a coat of clear or colored lacquer. It leaves a protective high gloss finish. The lacquer also takes two hours to dry. The final step of the finishing process is applying the decoration. The bold graphic designs are printed on plastic sheets. The skateboard factory either buys them ready-made or produces them in-house using its own silkscreen printing equipment. Workers center the design sheet, then feed the deck through a machine that applies heat and slight pressure simultaneously. The heat, 200 degrees Celsius, induces a chemical reaction that melts the ink and lacquer. When the plastic comes off, the deck is finished. Decks of this caliber are sold unassembled in specialty stores. They're designed for serious riders who want to customize their skateboards. They pick and choose from different types of trucks, wheels, bearings, even the bolts that hold everything together. All these factors determine how fast or how fancy their skateboard will move and maneuver.
So our build materials for skateboard include seven maple wood veneers, 14 ounces of glue, four wheels, eight wheel bearings, two metal trucks, eight bolts, eight screws, four ounces of lacquer, one sheet of grip tape, and one Bluetooth speaker, which has a protective and waterproof case so it doesn't get damaged. The total cost of materials for one skateboard is $35.72. And for our routing, the first stage of assembly is the gluing assembly, where we manually cover the veneers with the glue, each, each veneer, each set of veneers. And then they, we move to the pressing station, where we put the stacked veneers into a skateboard mold, and we'll put the mold in, uh, in a hydraulic press, and that stays there for about three hours. And then once it dries, we bring it to the drilling station, where we drill two sets of four holes, um, for the trucks, and then we go to the shaping assembly where we use a bandsaw, a router, and a drum sander to shape our deck. And then after that, we bring it to the finishing room where we spray our deck with a lacquer, which is a protective, um, it's like a protective film. And then after that, we bring it to the screen printing press where we install our um, graphics on the bottom of our decks. And lastly is our setup assembly, where we um, install the trucks, the wheels, the bearings, and the grip tape, as, along with the uh, Bluetooth speaker. And our total direct labor cost per skateboard is $57.75. So after about a year of producing these skateboards, um, we've been very excited to tap into the skateboarding market. Um, the first X Games were held 25 years ago. And the popularity of skateboarding absolutely took off around this time period. Um, at its peak, there were over 10 million people who considered themselves skateboarders. Um, and that lasted for about, say, a 15-year period. But since about 2006, many people have left the market because of how expensive it is. Um, High-end skateboards can go for about $250. And that is a huge turnoff to many people who just want to be casual skateboarders and are pretty much on a budget. So EJS. We are excited because we provide something new and exciting to the market with our Bluetooth capabilities. And we believe that our affordable price of $55 per skateboard, um, that should not be an issue to tap into the market. We've been uh, fairly successful at doing so, so far. Um, the current global market for skateboards is valued at $1.9 billion, but only about 32% of that is feasible for us to market to in North America. Um, and that evaluation is rising at a rate of 3.1% per year, um, meaning that there's a lot of money to be spent in the skateboarding industry. You know, five years from now, it's going to be a $2.4 billion global market. So people that are in the market are spending more and more money, and there's just a lot of money to be spent, um, which is obviously good for people like us. Um, and to skateboarders, brand loyalty is obviously very important. Um, teenagers, which account for 44% of the market, are probably the only group of people that are going to switch their brands. Um, once they transition into adulthood, it's hard to sway their opinion and make them change brands. Um, but with that said, uh, the big, most major skateboarding brands, they only account for about 20% of the market. Almost 80% of skateboard brands come from, uh, or skateboard sales, excuse me, come from smaller brands like us, like small startup companies. So we believe that we can have a competitive edge when tapping into this 80%. Um, with our speaker system, with our affordable costs, um, we have that brand that people, they think that we can like, relate with people that they will start to buy our brand. Um, so we're basically marketing only towards teenagers in this country. So like I said, it's like 44% um, of the market is teenagers, 32% is in North America. So with these numbers starting locally, uh, we believe we can get about 1% of this of this specific demographic um but our estimates say that through advertising through word of mouth through everything we expect our sales to rise by about 10 percent over the next two years um based on what other uh up-and-coming skateboarding brands that are similar to us have gone through um we expect to do pretty much the same with them but that means these numbers right now we have sold 1.43 million dollars in sales to start with 
but we expect that to rise to 1.76 million in sales uh, within the next three years, even more room to grow. So that's very exciting. Um, so, all right, so now let's look at the uh, equipment and the costs to need to produce our skateboards. Um, first thing we need would be paint rollers, and those cost a dollar eighty-two per unit. Um, and then we're going to need some mold presses um, to press the maple wood veneers together. And that uh, that costs three thousand nine hundred ninety-five per unit. And then we're going to need a drill rig, which it would be two thousand dollars per unit, um, and a bandsaw. Which is one hundred and seventy four ninety nine per unit. Then we need a router, which is sixty nine dollars per unit. Um, a drum sander, which is fifteen hundred, and a screen printer to print our designs on the bottom of the boards, and that is five hundred per unit. And then we still would have drill screwdriver and a T tool and a box cutter, and those are listed at thirty three eighty seven twenty five and four dollars per unit. Um, so all those would add up to a total equipment cost of twenty five thousand. $233.68 per unit. Um, and then for our costs, um, in our one year of business, we have incurred $1,767,410 of costs. We expect that to remain around there in 2019 and 2020. Um, and for our gross profit, um, in 2018, we sold 26,000 units at 55 unit, and that incurred a loss of 337400 and for operating expenses, um, we had rent, which was $20,160, and we had our equipment cost of $25,233. Um, our marketing would be $108,000 per year. Um, our payroll, $461,040 per year. Um, our insurance at $740, and that comes out to a total operating expense of $615,170. Um, and so our, our expected loss or income from each year in 2018, we did lose $337,410. But in 2019, um, right now our expected growth is at 11.54%, and that would be $165 in sales growth. And then in 2020, we hope to um, gain another $165,000 in sales growth, and that would be a 10.3% growth. So basically, Sharks, um, we came in to ask for the $500,000. Um, because we have lost in our first two years, um, we expect to lose about $500,000 in our first three years, which is what we are asking you for. Um, but what we need your money for, obviously, the three of us have put a lot of our own money into the company. But we need the money for advertising purposes because we do believe that we will someday hit a limit of what percentage of the market we will gain. Um, because of the consumer loyalty, the fact that we're such a small company, like I said, uh, we only advertise through Google right now. So we hope that when we expand our consumer base, we're going to need to advertise more, which is where about probably three hundred and twenty-four thousand dollars of the investment would go towards. Um, but also, as we expand our consumer base, we're going to start running out of inventory because we are only at the capacity of producing thirty-two thousand skateboards a year. Um, so we're going to need to probably build a new factory, which should nearly double our fixed costs. So the leftover of your investment will go towards uh, running our new factory when that time comes a few years down the road. Um, but we hope that the return on investment should be very large. Um, we've been growing every single year, and we expect to keep growing. And we hope that um, your investment will pay off. So thank you for taking your time and listening to our presentation, and we hope to be considered. Thank you. Thank you, Sharks.